Welcome back to my channel Tech for You. In my previous class, we have learned about the different types of TV screens in part one. Today in this classroom, we will completely understand what is OLED TV and how it works in super slim ultra high definition TV. Organic light emitting diode or LEDs are monolithic solid state device that typically consists of a series of organic thin film sandwiched between two thin film conductive electrodes. When electricity is applied to an OLED under the influence of an electrical field, charge carriers migrate from the electrodes into the organic thin film until they recombine in the MSU zone formations. The basic OLED cell structure consists of a stack of thin organic layers sandwiched between a conductive anode and conductive cathode. OLED work in a similar way to conventional diodes and LEDs, but instead of using layers of N-type and P-type semiconductors, they use organic molecules to produce their electrons and holes. Electron and holes are the two charge carriers that are present in a semiconductor material. The electron is the majority carrier in an N-type semiconductor and the hole is the majority carrier in P-type semiconductor. A simple OLED is made up of eight different layers. In the top and bottom, there are different layers of protective glass or plastics. The top layer is called the seal and the bottom layer is the substrate. In between those layers, there is a negative terminal called the cathode and the positive terminal called anode. Finally, in between the anode and cathode are two layers made from organic molecules called the emissive layer and the conductive layer. There are eight different layers stacked in OLED display technology. This is the breakdown of an OLED structure. The actual OLED layers in the middle occupy less than 1 by 200 the thickness of a human hair. The first layer known as substrate. Second layer anode. Third layer hole injection layer HIL. Fourth layer, hole transport layer, HTL. Fifth layer, emissive layer, host and fold emitter. Next is blocking layer, BL. Next, electron transport layer, ETL. And finally, eighth one is cathode. Next is the study of each layer. First one is substrate. Substrate is the foundation of the OLED screen. It can be plastic or glass or metal foil layer. Second one is anode. Anode is positively charged to inject holes into the organic layers that make up the OLED device. Next is the third one, hole injection layer that is HIL. HIL deposited on top of the anode, this layer receives holes from the anode and injects them deeper into the device. Fourth one is hole transport layer, HTL. HTL supports the transport of holes across it so they can reach the emissive layer. Fifth one is emissive layer. Emissive layer is the heart of the device and where light is made. The emissive layer consists of a color defining emitter doped into a host. This is the layer where the electrical energy is directly converted into light. Next sixth one, blocking layer, BL. Blocking layer is commonly used to improve OLED technology by confining electrons or charge carriers to the emissive layer. Seventh one is 
electron transport layer EDL. Electron transport layer is supports the transport of electrons across it so they can reach the emissive layer. Next last one is cathode. Cathode is negatively charged to inject electrons into the organic layers that make up the OLED device. These are the different layers encapsulated in organic light emitting diode TV screens. How an OLED emits light? To make an OLED light up, we simply attach a voltage or potential difference across the anode and cathode. As the electricity starts to flow, the cathode receives electrons from the power source and the anode loses them. Now we have a situation where the added electrons are making the emissive layer negatively charged while the conductive layer is becoming positively charged. Positive holes are much more mobile than negative electrons, so they jump across the boundary from the conductive layer to the emissive layer. When a hole meets an electron, the two things cancel out and release a brief burst of energy in the form of a practical of a photon or light in other words. This process is called recombination because it's happening many times a second the oil LED produces continuous light for a long as the current keeps flowing. We can make an oil LED produced color light by adding a colored filter into our plastic sandwich just beneath the glass or plastic top or bottom layer. If we put thousands of red, green and blue oil LEDs next to one another and switch them on and off independently, they work like the pixels in a conventional in a conventional LCD screen so we can produce complex high resolution colored pictures. Next is history of oil LED. Who invented oil LEDs? An organic semiconductors were discovered in the mid 1970s by Alan Hager, Alan McDiamed and Hideki Shirakawa who shared the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2000 for their work. The first efficient OLED described as a novel electroluminescent device constructed using organic materials as the emitting elements was developed by Ching Tang and Steven Wenslai, then working in the research lab at Eastman Kodak in 1987. The work to novel built in early research into electroluminescence, which was first reported in organic molecules by a French physicist named Andrew Bernans in the 1950s. By 1970, Digby Williams and Martin Shaddard had managed to create what they called a simple organic electroluminescent diode using anthracene, but it was not until Tang and Winslake's work in the 1980s that oil LED technologies become truly practical. Click on the subscribe button for more videos and click on the bell icon for notifications. Thank you for watching.